Hello and welcome everyone to another one of my production videos in which I talk about the things that I like during some music production moments and in this video I'm going to talk about three things that I like during the production of this song. By the way, if you want to listen to this song, you can go to the Bandcamp link below in the description. So now the first thing I want to talk about is a vocal effect in this part. So here are the vocals and they sound like this. So you can hear it is like three vocal layers and each of them has a slightly different melody. But there is also some sort of vocoderish voice on top. So let's deactivate that for now and just listen to the vocals dry. Not entirely dry because you see a lot of effects obviously. Obviously there's a lot of bleed in the recording because I recorded it a little bit low key. Didn't expect it to be the final version but it had a good vibe so I just kept it. You know sometimes it doesn't matter. So now let's activate this layer and deactivate the other one and it sounds like this. So this is Vocodyne, a plugin that is used to simulate the sound of talk boxes. So not entirely a vocoder and also not entirely autotune, but something in between in my opinion. Now let's go to this track up here, because here is a synthesizer that is playing a melody. And you can hear and see that the vocals coming out of Vocodyne sing the same melody as this melody up here. That is because I used a note receiver that receives the note from the other track. So what you can see there especially is that you can go into Vocodyne with polyphonic audio, for example a polyphonic voice performance, and it will create a sound from that that is actually monophonic, which I find very useful for simply, you know, resynthesizing a bunch of melodies with vocals. So now let's make another instance of a code on, and I'm going to show you my favorite parameters here. For example, the oscillator wave shape. Which is used to modulate like if your voice should sound more like a saw wave or a square wave. That's pretty cool. I really like basic waveforms, but at some point I could imagine an update with a whole dedicated wavetable editor or something else that just makes the waveform selection a little bit more exciting. This has a lot of potential. Another thing that I like here is the formant knob. <laughs> You can also turn off the consonants to just hear the effect a little bit better. And the character knob, I don't know exactly what it does, but yeah, I mean, it just switches between different available characters. And some of the ones at the end sound very noisy, and the ones at the beginning, I think they are often very useful to switch between them. Yeah, I really like this plug-in. It can be compared with Bitspeak a little bit. It has a similar sound, so let's try Bitspeak. So as you can see, Bitspeak has a similar sound, but it has some a little bit different parameters. You can change the sample rate to make it more grainy when you turn it down. You can dial in some detune to make yourself sound a little bit more like a unison synthesizer. You can pitch the vocal around in general. You can also change the noise amount. But yeah, Vocodon had a few parameters that are also not present in Bitspeak. So I'm glad that I have both plugins. 
So next thing I want to talk about is the gong in the song, which comes in regular intervals and it has a lot of energy. Yeah, I think it's just one of those moments where the gong works just the best. You know, sometimes a gong can be a little bit out of place, just like other kinds of cymbals, but here it is just mmm, so nice. So at the beginning, it's just a very generic gong sample even a little bit cut off at the end and also mono it's very old school in that regard so the first thing i do is make it stereo with a little bit of reverb i use the andromeda algorithm so as you can see that adds a lot of width and it also leans into the flavor of the gong very nicely eqing nothing special here but the thing that really stands out is this transient shaper and here I actually use not my favorite setting of transient shaper, but the opposite of that. Instead of isolating the transient by dialing in attack completely and pump as well, I do the opposite. I dial down attack completely and keep pump where it is so that I only reduce the transient at the beginning and also very fast and then come back to the normal sound. You should just listen to how this sounds when I turn it on and off while playing back the music, starting with it being turned off. And now I turn it on. Did you hear that? It just works much better with a mix and the reason for that is because the gong always comes at the same time as the kick. So this is basically just a way to replace sidechain compression without the need to sidechain. It is just a faster way to do basically the same thing more or less maybe with a slightly different gain curve another way to accomplish this would have been to use my plugin adsr because we have this being midi triggered by inversing the waveform and then choosing some very short gain modulation yeah so this would have been even more precise than using the transient shaper because you can change the shape of this wave and also because you have a little bit of look ahead available here for the attack time if look ahead is enabled so that can make an even cleaner sound maybe yeah i think i just heard it being a little bit cleaner than the transient shaper but i'm not working on this project anymore so i put it back and honestly this is also easier to set up so if you're using ADSR for the more precise sound or transient shaper for, you know, just a quick workflow, that's up to you. And that's why I wanted to show you these workflows. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the kick in this track. Listen to the kick drum very closely and feel into it. How does it work in the mix? There are a lot of elements in the mix, a lot of noise, a lot of multiple layers of sounds all on top of each other, yet the kick is capable of punching through with a lot of knock and also a little bit of low end, like just enough that is needed for the track. So it should be a pretty cool kick, right? So let's listen to the kick in solo. And you're probably very surprised now that this is such a weak kick. It is just not consistent at all. It is like all over the place. Sometimes it has a strong click and sometimes it doesn't. Why does it work so well in the mix? I can't tell you, it just does. I can only tell you how it came to be. It all started with this sample. So I wanted to make a granular texture out of this and I also did so because I sent it here to another track where it sounds like this. And this sound is actually in the mix as well, but I made another layer which turned out to sound like a kick when I added this filter. 
So you can see there is a segments modulator, which is a multi-segment envelope generator. And every time it jumps up from here, it sounds a little bit like a kick. And then it does this wow, 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 wow thing because I attached this modulator to a bunch of parameters in the wobbles filter. I don't know exactly why it does that, but it did. And when it did that, I felt like, okay, I could make this a kick, but I need to get rid of this wow, 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 wow stuff. So I added my ADS up plugin again and just made sure that I, you know, cut out everything after the start of each note. Yeah, and that's it. That's how the kick works. Yeah, so that was pretty cool, I think, because usually there are just strict rules in music production. For example, if you think of a kick that would normally be used in a modern production, you would, for example, think of something like this. Something really fat that just has a lot of transient body and tail and it's still very short so that it can, you know, not take too much space in the mix for the bass line and stuff. A kick like this works on almost everything. Yet, I didn't have to use a kick like this in this project and I am not even sure if it would have been better. I don't even want to know because I really like the mix the way it is right now. This just shows that sometimes, I mean, the rules are not there for no reason. Mixing rules make sense in most situations, but in some situations you just need to accept that another solution is the right solution. And I feel like that's just beautiful because it means that we still need to do something and make decisions and not just, you know, accomplish a bunch of tasks. Yeah, that's it. That were the three things that I wanted to talk about. Let me know if you like the track. It is about the feeling that you have when you want someone to put something into Tupperware. And yeah, I think that's pretty relatable. Everyone has run into a situation where they want to, they, where they want someone else to put something into Tupperware. So this must be the next chart hit of the summer, I guess. Uh, yeah.